It's time for the RMAC Radio Show, featuring all the latest information from around the Rocky Mountain Athletic Conference. The RMAC is a proud member of NCAA Division II. Now, here's your host, Eric Danner. Welcome to the RMAC Radio Show, week number four. My name is Eric Danner. We had another big week of RMAC football action that we're going to get into in just a minute or so here. We're going to have Marty Heaton, the head football coach at Adams State University, in this first segment. Then in segment number two, we're going to talk some RMAC volleyball with Nikki Kinzer of UCCS. And then segment number three, we'll wrap things up. Uh, that will include uh, some sound bites from uh, CSU Pueblo Soccer I had a chance to go down there this past weekend, and they had a big tie against Colorado Mines on uh, Friday night. But uh, first off, we're going to start with the other kind of football, the American kind. And looking at the RMAC standings, uh, we had our first uh, real full slate of RMAC action this past weekend. So we have four, uh, excuse me, five teams now, 1-0 and in the RMAC and five teams 0-1. And, and two of the teams uh, sitting atop the league right now, Adam State, CSU Pueblo, they're both 1-0 in the conference, 3-0 overall, and they play this Saturday night, 6 p.m. at the Nita and Eddie DeRose Thunder Bowl. And joining us now on the RMAC Hotline is the head coach of the Grizzlies. His name is Marty Heaton. Coach Heaton, how's it going today? Doing, doing great. How are you doing, Eric? I'm doing great, Coach. Hey, 3-0, uh, 1-0 in conference. you got to be pleased with your start this year. Have you had a chance to kind of step back and kind of evaluate uh, these first three games? Yeah, you know, it's always nice to get off to a good start, and, and winning those games has been good, and, you know, we really talk about, uh, you know, those first three games are the games that you really go through and, and measure your improvement, and, you know, you hope you get better each week, and, you know, we feel like we have done that a little bit. Talking with Marty Heaton, the head football coach at Adams State University, and coach, uh, we talked a little bit about this at RMAC Football Media Day back in August, but uh, your tenure, you're right up there in the league now. Uh, Bob Stitt, of course, is the dean of RMAC football coaches, but you and Coach Riston both came in in the same year, and uh, now here you, uh, you know, all three of those teams. When you look at the the RMAC standings, all uh, undefeated in the league, and that's probably. Uh, you know, the, there's something to do with uh, that longevity, I guess you might call it, or or that continuity in a coaching staff. Well, you know, like I said, it comes. You know, it, it helps to be here for a while, and you know, to be able to get your program where you're at, and we're kind of at that point now that uh, you know our kids kind of know what we expect of them, and and we've got the kids that we want in the program, and you know, John's done a great job down there at, at Pueblo too, and. Uh, you know, he, he's definitely got that thing going, and and, and, and Bob, like I said, has, has been there a long time, and they know what they're they're doing down there at Mines, too. So it does help to have uh, some continuity and, uh, you know, put a couple of years under our belt and helped a lot around here. Talking with Marty Heaton from Adams State, the Grizzlies defeated Western State this past weekend 43-14 to in the Colorado Classic, their 11th straight victory over Western State. But I imagine going into Gunnison, Coach, especially – with your long history in the RMAC and knowing uh, the rivalry between Adam State and Western State, I, I'm sure you take nothing for granted there. <laughs> yeah, so you take and you control all that stuff out, records and everything, and when it becomes a, a rivalry game, and uh, you know you're always you're always nervous in those games, and uh, you know it was nice to come away with a victory, and uh, you know uh, didn't always play real well, but uh, you know again, like I said, you get a lot of emotion in those type of games, and uh, our kids uh, did a good job and we came up with the win. Talking with Marty Heaton, the head football coach at Adams State University. And it seems like, Coach, you guys have quite a few rivalry games. Of course, Western State's the one everyone knows about. But uh, there's a rivalry game between Fort Lewis where you got the uh, the rifle uh, on the line. You got the uh, uh, CSU Pueblo. I mean, this has turned into uh, quite a bit of a, a little rivalry game. So it seems like every week uh, you guys are playing these rivalry games. Yeah, I think uh, everybody hates Adam. That's we're the one team nobody wants to lose to. I think, <laughs> and uh, and so I, I mean, it has. And when you you know, like I said, you know, Adams Little School's been around for a long time, and just the location puts us in a situation where we got you know two or three natural rivals right around us in in Western Fort Lewis, and uh, and, and Pueblo has really become that. Uh, they they you know, like I said, we you know, John and I kind of came at the same time, and. Uh, there's a lot of history between the two schools way before this, but uh, uh, you know it, it has become a very big game for us. And and you know I, I know John you know feels the same way probably a little bit about uh, the game also. 
Talking with Marty Heaton, head football coach at Adams State University. And, Coach, uh, we had a chance to go down there last year when you guys unveiled the new Rex Field and what, what a renovation that was. And it's really second to none in all Division Two. And and imagine you got to be uh, extremely happy with how that turned out. You know, the facilities have been really, you know, nice. And, uh, you know, we are fortunate. We do feel like they're one of the top in the, in the country. And, uh, and uh, last last year's game, the atmosphere was uh, as exciting as it gets for uh, you know a Division two football game, and uh, and I expect the same to be the same this 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 weekend down in Pueblo. Talk with Marty Heaton and Coach, uh, you made a, a change at quarterback this year. Uh, Trevor Eggleston had started uh, the past three years for you, uh, but uh, you had some competition at quarterback in, in the off season and during camp, and and you went with uh, Cody Davies as your starting quarterback this year. And uh, just looking at the numbers, having a, had a chance to see you play in person, I will this Saturday. But uh, it seems like he's a very efficient uh, quarterback who, who's very careful with the football. Is that fair to say? Uh, I think that's a real accurate statement. I think he he. he, he He's running our offense extremely well. He's doing what we're asking to do. Uh, he's very smart, uh, smart with the ball. And, uh, you know, again, you know, as far as our uh, goal is, is, you know, we always talk about it's all about the ball. And, uh, you know, we, we want to win that turnover margin. And we've been winning every game, the turnover margin. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we might be leading the conference or leading the country, actually, in the, in the number of turnovers we've, we've taken. And so... We really feel good about you know what Cody's done at that position, and uh, he's made some big plays when he had to. Yeah, and one of those uh, big plays uh, on the defensive side of the ball, a takeaway this past weekend, was done by Connor Stevens. Had an interception uh, for a 40-yard touchdown against Western State, and he is going to be our Armac slash Rawlings Defensive Player of the Week. And Connor Stevens, a kid out of here in Colorado Springs, where we do the show, Coach. And I know... Uh, it's your fifth year there, but uh, you know you, you got all your own guys in there. I know uh, Connor Stevens; he was a pretty big recruit for you a couple of years back uh, from Pine Creek High School. Yeah, Connor's Connor's a great kid. Uh, you know, he came in and he registered as a freshman, and uh, uh, now he's this is his second year playing for us. And uh, like I said, he's one of those kids that we're really building the program on. And uh, those are the type of kids. He's a he's just a great, hardworking kid, and uh, he had a great game and. Uh, and uh, he's going to need another big one this week. Talking with Marty Heaton and Coach, what do you expect this atmosphere to be like in Pueblo? I know uh, distance-wise it's one of your uh, shorter road trips, so I imagine a fair number of folks are going to make the trip over from Alamosa, and, and obviously you got a lot of kids from the front range of Colorado, and their parents can probably come down and watch this game, so it ought to be quite a collegiate atmosphere this Saturday night, I would think. Yeah, we, we, you know, I, I know we got a big uh, – Planning on going over a lot of the, you know a lot of the, most people are heading that way and uh, like I said a lot of people from the front range will be up and uh, and like I said Pueblo is as good a sports town as there is in, in the state uh, it, uh, it it should be quite a quite an atmosphere. Well, hey coach, we look forward to uh, seeing it and good luck the rest of the way. Well, thanks a lot, Eric. All right, that is Marty Heaton, the head football coach at Adam State. University. We had a chance to talk to him about that on Armac Football Media Day. He's an old school ASC guy, but uh, you know, adapting to the new name with Adam State University, and uh, they defeated Western State this past weekend. And for what else happened in Armac football, let's head over to Chris Poulton with the Armac recap. Thanks, Eric. It was a great weekend for CSU Pueblo's J.B. Matthews, who accounted for 293 total yards and four touchdowns as the pack survives a scare in Silver City against Western New Mexico. Thunderwolves stay perfect with the 35-27 win. Colorado Mines welcomed Black Hills State to conference play with a thumping. Matt Brown leading the offense for Mines, throwing for three TDs and 407 yards. Or Diggers win 42 to 19. Coach Bob Stitt talks after the win. Number one, we, we came out here to get the win. We were a little little rusty early, and uh, you know we expect to ex- expect to execute a lot better than we did early. We thought we could have blown this thing out in the, in the first half and didn't get it done, and you got to hand it to, to Black Hills that they hung in there and played us tough. Adam State was out to wreck the homecoming of Western State, and that they did. Connor Stevens for the Grizz picked six. Mountaineer QB Brian Dabowski in the second quarter to extend the lead 18-0 ASC. Final score 43-14 Adams. 
Shattered State traveling to Colorado Mesa for a Saturday afternoon battle. And the Mavs made it interesting at the end of the half when Mike Brady went to the house on a 75-yard INT. CSC QB John McClain would bounce back in the fourth, throwing for two scores and lifting the Eagles to the 41-30 victory. Two non-conference games played over the weekend and both ending with losses for the RMAC. New Mexico Highlands put their undefeated record against Southern Utah in Cedar City, Utah. The Cowboy defense did everything they could to help out a struggling offense with two picks returned to pay dirt. It wasn't enough, though, as the 24 second half points buried NMHU final 45-23. Fort Lewis had the daunting task of taking on Northern Arizona. The Skyhawks were only able to put up 121 total yards on offense as they were blanked 69 to nothing. I'm Chris Poulton, and that's your RMAC recap. Thank you, Chris. Our RMAC Rawlings Players of the Week, J.B. Matthews is our Offensive Player of the Week from CSU Pueblo, 227 yards rushing, four touchdowns in the Pack's big win at Western New Mexico. Connor Stevens, as we mentioned to Coach Heaton, is our Armac Rawlings Defensive Player of the Week. He had eight tackles, including, including two for loss and an interception for a touchdown in the Grizzlies' win over Western State. And Taylor Accardi against Black Hill State at a huge uh, weekend punting the ball, 54.7 average for the All-American, including five inside the 20 so congratulations to our armac slash rawlings players of the week let's now look at the armac football schedule for the upcoming week the game of the week uh, looks to be adam state at csu Pueblo. that's going to be a six o'clock kickoff at the nita and eddie de rose thunder bowl the other 1a game of the week how out of minds traveling to new mexico highlands that figures to be a big one down in las vegas 1 p.m kickoff down there and then uh, black hill state will be hosting their first RMAC game as an RMAC member against Colorado Mesa. It's going to be homecoming for the Yellow Jackets, 1 p.m. kickoff in Spearfish. Shadron State will be hosting Western State. Of course, Jazz Baines uh, was a coach at Shadron, so it'll be somewhat of a homecoming for him. That's a noon kickoff at Don Beebe Stadium. And then we also have Western New Mexico hosting Fort Lewis. That's also a noon kickoff. If you remember last year on the other end of it, that was the one where uh, Western New Mexico's bus caught on fire and the Fort Lewis football team helped him out with the jerseys and then Western New Mexico wound up winning that game. So I'm sure the Skyhawks would like to return the favor. That does it for football. When we come back, we're going to talk some RMAC volleyball with UCCS star Nikki Kinzer. You're listening to the RMAC Radio Show. <laughs> 